Hey everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, it's TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not already, make sure you subscribe to YouTube, subscribe to the blog. Um, you don't want to miss out on things. I have lots of goodies, uh, giveaways, announcements, all that stuff. So make sure you subscribe. And the way this works is simple. You send me a question, either by email, Dan at TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com, <clears throat> or you can call or text me, 949-415-6256. So today's question, oh, and by the way, I'll keep you anonymous, okay, because most of you guys, um, and I don't blame you, <laughs> want to be kept anonymous. But some of these questions I get are just, like this one today, perfect example. I don't, don't believe, uh, I'm not surprised, but I can't believe that this is actually happening. So... It says, hey, I just started working at a clinic and learned this afternoon that there were several patients who participated in a research study two years ago who never signed consents. The doctor discussed the research with them and they agreed, but there is currently no documentation of this. I know I need to report this major violation to the IRB, but I have no idea what to expect when they respond. How do you expect they will respond? they meaning the IRB so I cannot believe this happened I mean the first rule if there was like a Ten Commandments of research rule number one would be you must provide informed consent that's like basic right that's the most basic and there's every study has an informed consent form so it's not just even if you had documentation that an informed consent was done if you don't have it signed on an IRB approved stamped informed consent form, uh, that's a major finding. If the FDA sees this, that's a major finding. Sponsor, this is a major finding. And th this happened two years ago, and so I'm assuming the study's over and the study participants are nowhere to be found. Because what you could do is have them sign a consent form now and then just put a note to file that the original informed consent form is not, you're not able to locate it. So we, we brought the patients in to retroactively sign. That's the best thing you can do if you can get a hold of those patients because at least you'll have something. But having nothing in place, so you're going to report it to the IRB. Chances are you're going to get audited by the IRB because this happened, I think, uh, there were several patients, you said, who participated in a study two years ago. So I'm assuming two or three or four or maybe even more. Uh, yeah, you're definitely going to get an IRB audit. They probably will call you later to schedule an audit. Um, now, don't freak out. IRB audits are not that bad. Um, what an IRB audit is, I mean, IRB is in charge of ethics committees, and they're in charge of approving the informed consent form. So to them, this is a big deal. But they can't, I mean, I think they can let the FDA know but it's such a bureaucracy, they're not going to do that. What's more likely to happen is the IRB is going to approach the sponsor or the CRO in charge of the trial and say, hey, what the heck is going on? Why are your monitors not picking up on this like cardinal, cardinal sin that's been committed? Uh, and not just once, several times. So it looks like the CRA was asleep at the wheel here. Um, and so that will trigger a sponsor audit. That might trigger a CRO audit. Um, and to be honest with you, they'll probably try to keep the FDA from auditing. So they'll just do an internal audit, especially if the study's over already. Um, I really doubt the sponsor is going to report you to the FDA. They typically reserve that for cases of fraud, which this doesn't appear to be fraud. It just appears to be um, not following GCP. Uh, so they, they probably are not going to let the FDA know about it. The IRB might, but what the IRB will probably do is let the sponsor know. And the sponsor is already going to know if uh, you're filling out a protocol violation form because they're supposed to get a copy. So it's going to be ugly for you, but you have to do it. What I would do is try to find some of the study participants, have them come in and at least sign the informed consent form and have them write on it retroactively. Um, when they join the study, you could put, uh, I was informed, they could write, I was informed of this 
uh, at my screening visit um, and now I am signing it retroactively as of that date and they have to date it whatever date today is that they're signing it. That's what I would do but that's what you can expect. Um, can't believe this is happening but hey I mean I guess uh, you've seen it all. So yeah that's what you can expect. Hopefully it's not too bad but for sure an IRB audit and then um, probably a sponsor and a CRO audit and the bad thing about the IRB audit is if you're doing any other study with that same IRB they're gonna now audit all those studies and same thing with the sponsor or CRO if you're doing any other protocols with that sponsor or CRO they're gonna now audit all those studies as well so that's what you can expect hopefully you get through with very few uh, headaches <laughs> and other findings um, yeah and that's it uh, hopefully this helps learn from this mistake at least get informed consent I mean that's like the number one GCP uh, guideline you do not want to play around with okay Dan from the clinical trials keep your questions coming in take care